Ooh, that was a close one. Oh, hey. You want to know a big secret? I am a secret agent. I know, right? It's amazing. And I trust you. Do you want to know what I use? I have a time machine. That's right. I'm going to show it to you. Where should we go? How about... Ooh, World War II, the Battle of Britain. Let's go. Now, she does all the technical difficulties, and she does the... She made the time travel, I should say, and she helps everyone go to where they want to go. Hey, Vina. Uh, yeah? World War Two. I guess... Yeah, the Battle of Britain. July to September 1940, no please. No problem for me. Okay, just make sure you don't get in trouble, okay? And make sure you do not change history. Okay, it's all set. Go get in, and I will fire up the okay, mechanism. I'm ready. Three, two, one. It's a dangerous place. Okay. It looks like it's the 16th of July, 1940. Which means... Ooh, this is just getting to be the part where Hitler makes orders about Operation Sea Lion. So basically, Operation Sea Lion is when Hitler ordered that 20 parts of his army are going to invade the south of England. And, you know, the thing is, before he could cross the English Channel, he had to make sure that the sky was clear of enemy planes. And that was when Operation Eagle was made. And how the Battle of Britain hey guys, started I out. just found a mechanic slash ground crew guy over here. So he's going to tell you a lot about the planes that the RAF flew. And perhaps the Luftwaffe. Luckily I'm in Britain and I won't tell you why I'm lucky. So over to you Patrick. Oh right. Why hello. I'm an RAF mechanic slash ground crew as Jackson kindly told you. So, let's start by comparing. The RAF had 700 planes in total, whereas the Luftwaffe had 4,000 planes in total. However, the RAF had 300 to 350 being built per month, which was very good. Now, we have Spitfires. These are our most modern fighter aircraft. They were fast and they turned quickly. They were good for an all-round view because it had a bubble cockpit and it had a Rolls-Royce engine, meaning that the people down below could hear it purring away so that they knew if we were still alive or if we were being shot down. However, the Luftwaffe had things called Junkers or Stukas. When they reached their targets, they would dive down in a super straight line, bomb, and would most likely hit their target. Uh, now I have a woman here who is going to tell you all about the WAF. I'll see you in a bit. Hi, Casey, and today I will just be telling you some very basic facts about the WAF. Uh, because two of my other friends are going to tell you much more uh, in detailed facts. So, I am part of the WAF, which is Women's Auxiliary Air Force, for uh, the Royal Air Force, or the RAF. So, there were 8,000 women, and we set up uh, barrage bombs and radar to help the RAF in many, many ways, which my friends will explain now. <laughs> Thank you. For my name is Avis, and I work in the radar stations. There are 51 stations covered all across south of Britain because that is where the Germans are trying to attack us now. Let's see, where should I start? Well, the radar gave the RAF early warnings of German attacks so they could scramble into their planes as soon as possible. Scrambling is when we called the RAF and it would meant it meant that 
They only had two minutes to quickly scramble into their planes and get up into the sky and fight the Germans. Germans usually targeted the radars so that they could take us by surprise, but whenever one got shot down, the others were always working. And now we have the last person for the WAP. Hello, my name is Tora, and I'll be just telling you a, a couple things about barrage bombs. Barrage bombs just were raised by us to stop the Germans from flying low. They look uh, like a giant mushroom, pretty much, yeah. And they sort of have a tipped, kind of rounded point, and it took roughly for a woman to for a woman to pull up the barrage balloons with a piece of string that's all about barrage bombs pretty much so thank you very much for learning about the WAF and I will go back to chat the girls said the Germans started bombing our radar stations and even the airfields this is a big problem because it was grinding down the RAF and oh, at one stage the RAF only had enough planes to last them for six weeks or 42 days which really isn't a lot of time. The RAF were in deep trouble. But you know if the Germans hadn't have made this grave mistake the Germans could have taken control of the skies. What is this grave mistake, you ask? Germans began Let's go to bomb the cities instead of bombing airfields. <laughs> extremely good for the RAF. Yeah, we're going to rebuild up our planes. Take that, Germans. Yeah. The people who weren't feeling very happy were the citizens. Their homes were being destroyed. But instead of their morale going down, it was going up. They were now more determined to fight the Germans. Let's beat them! And let's kill September 1940. The Germans sent out two massive waves of attacks. But with all of our aircraft available, the RAF won. Sixty aircraft were shot down to only 26 RAF aircraft, as the Germans only did have 20 minutes of flying over Britain. The Germans' defeat caused Hitler to order the postponement of Operation Sea Lion, the invasion of Britain. And now, the Luftwaffe started bombing raids at night. But the air battles on the 15th of September became known as the Battle of Britain Day. I hope you learned a lot and thank you for coming with me. I better get back now. Boop, boop, boop.